Right, well, thank you for coming on today. It's fantastic to see so many people. Out of interest, how many people here actually drive an electric car already? Can I have a show of hands? Oh, crikey, okay. So I'm, I'm preaching to the converted pretty much. Uh, that's good, excellent. Um, a huge change from sort of four or five years ago, when I, well, six, seven years ago, when I started doing these, these sort of talks, and, uh, and literally nobody knew what an electric car was, nobody had ever seen one. So it's, uh, it's fantastic to see um, a big difference, and it's great. It's great. So, um, you know, obviously, if you've already got electric cars, then you don't need to have much of an introduction. But what I will do is I'll go through a, a brief history of what, how we got to where we are today and what that actually means in terms of you know, what we can, what electric cars will allow us to do in the future and what can actually change the buying perception of what an electric car can be. I've been around the electric vehicle industry since, oh crikey, 2003. Uh, originally with electric bikes and then later on with uh, electric cars. I started driving my own electric car, which was a G-Wiz, back in 2006. It was the first one. I then got involved with the development and design of electric vehicles. I've worked with a number of manufacturers, including Nissan and uh, Mitsubishi, uh, Bluebird, uh, Volvo, uh, and a couple of others as well, on their electric vehicle programs, mainly on the battery side. So if it, the battery run flat, it's probably my fault. Um, but yeah, so... Uh, We'll head on, a bit of a taste of where, we, where we'll actually end up uh, with, how, we're gonna get, how, how your next car could be free. We got very used to uh, free stuff, um, very much more so over the last sort of 10, 15 years with the internet, you know, Google particularly, with YouTube and things like that. But, but uh, there are lots of things we can get for free, uh, and it, it's an exciting, an exciting price because it gets, grabs people's attention. If something's free, they want it. Uh, and it changes, it changes the world. If you look at Google and what Google are doing, when did Google last turn up on your bank statement or on your credit card bill? It didn't. And yet you use their services and their, uh, their websites all the time. But it is nothing new. We've had free libraries, we've got free radio stations, free television, which we don't pay for, we get. And obviously to do that, somebody has to pay the price. Now, that can be through advertising, it could be by buying a different product and so on and so forth. And we'll talk about the different ways that happens because we can apply that to, uh, you know, to, to an electric car. You know, we do it with mobile phones, you get a free mobile phone but you pay for a contract. Uh, free music on Spotify, that sort of thing where some people pay for the enhanced services. And so it, it, we can use that model for electric cars and they can't do, use it for other types of vehicles which is the exciting thing. So, but well first, we'll rewind to 2005, so we'll go back 10 years. And electric cars, well, there was really only one electric car on the market as such. There was one or two conversions, that sort of thing, but this was a, a little Indian vehicle called the G-Wiz. Funny looking thing, believe it or not, you can actually fit four people in it. And in fact, I've seen four people and a dog in one, which is quite interesting. Um, but, uh, but yeah, very, very small micro car, um, built in India. Very poor quality build, unfortunately. Uh, top speed of the original one was 40 miles an hour, range of 40 miles, in reality near a 30. And uh, it became a, a bit of a hit in, uh, in London. And London, London's an interesting market, as they love their vehicles. They've had the Black Cab, which is part of London, and the, the London bus, which of course is part of London. And the G-Wiz seemed to go the same sort of way. There was a real pride in people in London, and they had their own special car that nobody else had access to. And it, it became you know, quite popular. It was the world's best-selling electric car for, for a couple of years. Um, but yeah, very strange, basic vehicle. But it sold very successfully. And... The question is why? It sold because it saved money. Um, basically, if you bought one of those, then you, were, you didn't have to pay for the congestion charge. It originally five pounds a day, then eight pounds a day. You didn't have to pay for uh, parking in lots of parts of London. There was free charging points already uh, po popping up there already. So actually, it was very, very cheap to buy, and, and you got your money back effectively after about 18 months. The people who bought them had plenty of money, and an awful lot of them uh, had Range Rovers and Porsches and all sorts of things as, as their main vehicle, and this was their second vehicle. You used to joke that instead of having a, sp a, sp a spare, spare wheel in your Range Rover, you get one of these instead. <laughs> and, um, uh, but yeah, so there were people with a fair amount of disposable income, and they were prepared to b drive around in something like this. It was a... It, it was interesting because uh, you know, other electric cars came out, they were more expensive, and there was de but there was definitely a price point where electric cars just wouldn't sell, and with the smaller ones it was around the £10,000 mark. 
What was very interesting, sorry, I should have done that before to the main, the main thing, was in most cases, the environment wasn't the reason for buying an electric car. A lot of people bought the electric cars and then became interested in the environment as a result of that, but it, it happened that way around, not buying the, uh, buying the electric car because you were interested in, in green issues. And uh, you know, that came up time and time again. And the press, you know, when you talk, they were talking to G Wiz owners, they assumed that they were just environmentalists and that sort of thing. And, and uh, you know, so the, the message was going out that these people were being green, and that was making them green in the, in the first place, which is quite an in interesting way around to do it. But when the mainstream manufacturers came, um, most of them were a bit sniffy about the GWIS because it was very badly built and very basic and crude and everything else, and they didn't think that it could, that it could teach them anything. Um, and they struggled, they really did, uh, because they assumed that the press were right, that everyone bought these cars because of the environment and they were green and everything else, and actually that wasn't the case at all. And um, I, I remember speaking with a French car manufacturer in their marketing department saying, well, how do we market these things? We, you know, we, you know, we, we've been pushing them to the environmental people and they're not interested. So, well, no, because you're pushing it to the wrong set of people. Look, look at the people who can save money, look at the people who, who like, like new technology, like new gadgets, and aim it at those people instead. And they, they were really struggling with it because they were saying, if we push the green side, then you know, we, it's going to affect our diesel sales, and we're the best, biggest manufacturer of diesel engines in the world. And it, you would have got it completely wrong. But we got there, we slowly started getting there, but it took a while. They just really didn't understand the marketplace, the, the potential customers, and as a result, consequently, very few people bought them initially. So the first uh, customers, a lot of them were. Um, uh, uh, were enthusiasts and, and, and GWIS owners wanting to upgrade, but government departments, businesses were trying to push themselves as being green and all that sort of stuff. They were the, the main mar market for the first cars. And they didn't sell because nobody knew why they should care. Unfortunately, most people don't, don't really care about the environment if it's going to cost them more money. That's not always the case, but unfortunately it is, a case, it is the majority view. If they can save money and it's good for the environment, then great. But if, they, if it's going to cost them extra, mm, don't know. They were too expensive, and the assumption was that the cars were rubbish. Because the manufacturers were promoting them as environmentally friendly and everything else, they were talking about the lifestyle rather than the vehicle, about the product. And consequently, if you, people think, well, if you're not talking about the product, there's a reason for that. You know, is it a really bad, a bad product? You know, they're slow, they're boring, they're horrible cars, they haven't got a decent range, where can I charge them up? All those sort of issues were coming up and they weren't being answered by the marketing departments and people just couldn't see the point. And consequently, you know, the, the, the message has been inconsistent. Admittedly, back in 2011, very few cars available, very poor uh, charging point infrastructure, um, you know, very expensive to buy or lease, and so therefore there, you know, there, were, it, there were other reasons as well they weren't selling, but um, you know, the, the, the confused message really was a major, major problem there. Thankfully, a bit different today. We've got whole loads of cars, you, you'll see them all outside, you'll see car, car conversions here as well, fantastic stuff. Um, the sticker prices remain high, but let's ignore those because actually the leasing costs can be extremely competitive and we'll go, uh, I'll show you a few examples of those because that's where it gets very exciting. We got UK wide charging networks, the Zero Carbon World were, uh, f uh, were, were, who hosts today's event did an awful lot of work in that arena uh, to get free charging points everywhere and they've done a fantastic job. Uh, not just themselves, but encouraging other uh, organisations to, uh, to get on that bandwagon and, and create free charging and make this a real opportunity. Uh, you know, talking within government and getting other organisations, Nissan uh, donating high-speed charging uh, point facilities, which are now appearing on motorways and all that sort of stuff. Uh, so, very exciting work. So, Ecotricity and Nissan have been putting the charging points on the motorways. I've driven 125 miles so far today, and I've got another 125 miles to go later on in my Nissan Leaf. Not a problem. I can drive there. I need, to, I need to charge up on the way down. I need to charge up on the way back. But that sort of distance journey, you need to stop anyway. So, a half hour stop, that's not a bad thing. 
they're free charging, and that's a fantastic thing. Um, you do pay for some charging, but on motorways and uh, a lot of inner city uh, charging points are all free. So you, you apply to get the cards, you know, the, the access cards. Sometimes you have to pay for the different cards, but otherwise it's all, it's all free, which is fantastic. A bit different from paying 50, 60, 70 quid to fill up your car with petrol. And because the charging points are everywhere, we've now got to the stage, finally, where you don't have to plan your journey. You know if you're going down the motorway, you're going to go past a service station, you're going to be able to plug in and charge up. And there isn't just one charging point there, there's two or three or four. So uh, you know, if there's another car there, it's not a problem, you're going to be able to, be able to charge up. It all means that electric cars have finally become viable. So let's look at who's buying electric cars now, because it will give you a real key of how, we can, uh, how this market is going to change and how it could radicalise electric car, uh, car ownership in the UK. People who are buying the vehicles at the moment, an awful lot of them are higher than average mileage drivers. So we will worry about, oh, I haven't got the range to go anywhere or whatever. Well, these guys are going further than your average driver. So, you know, you're, they're doing 40, 50 miles a day, uh, 60 miles a day, whatever. Uh, a lot of people are commuting long distance to go to work, uh, or they're just doing lots of one-off journeys which will add up over the time. But, but yeah, we're not seeing the, the, the low mileage drivers are doing 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 miles a, a year. There are a few, yeah, yes, there are some, but the majority of them are doing the long distance stuff and, 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 and using their cars an awful lot. Now that's great because uh, there's two ways you can look at that data. You can either way say, oh dear, that means that people are using their cars more because they're electric, but actually what's really happening is people are um, are switching away from a, a, a diesel or a, 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 a petrol car to go to an electric car. And so you're taking off the, a, an awful lot more CO2 of, uh, and pollution out of the air because you're, those are the, uh, the people who are buying it. The people who are buying, yeah, also secondary adopters, people who, who like to technology and gadgets but are a bit scared of doing it first. So, you know, they, they buy the iPad 2 rather than the iPad 1 and all this sort of stuff. A lot of older people are buying them, uh, you know, because it's great. You don't have to worry about going to the service station. You plug in at home. Every time you get to the vehicle, you've got a full charge of electricity. Off you go. It's perfect. It, 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 uh, the convenience factor of an electric car is great. A lot of families who are looking to save money, they might have two cars already, switch one to electric, and what you then find is that the electric car gets used for pretty much everything, uh, which is, again, you might switch some of your mileage to the electric car rather than the other car. Uh, and that's, ha uh, that's happening. But also families who are, who are getting rid of an, an ordinary car to get an electric car. Well, uh, we only have one car in our family, it's electric, and that's fine. One thing which is very interesting, and there's a good reason for this, most people are choosing to lease the cars rather than buy them. And that's down to the fact there are some fantastic lease deals around and the sticker price remains high. So a Nissan Leaf is, you know, list price 25, 26, 27,000 pounds, depending on the spec. But if you can lease one for 200 pounds a month, that's a really cheap way of owning a fantastic car. But the reasons that people are buying are also interesting. Same reason that the g -Wiz owners bought their cars 10 years ago. They can save money. Cost savings are the main reason. When the, uh, petrol prices go up, electric car sales go up. When petrol prices go down, electric car sales go down. The environment, again, is not a deciding factor. It may become one later on because people, you, know, you, you start talking to your friends about your electric car and they start asking, saying, oh, you didn't realise you're interested in the environment and that sort of thing. And it actually makes people think more about the environment. Um, but, but, but it isn't necessarily the reason they buy in the first place. Once you bought the car, then you discover the benefits, the fact that you're plugging it in, it's charged up every morning, and it, you, know, you can switch the, the heating on automatically from, from your mobile phone before you get into the car, all that sort of nice things which make it, make it nice to use. The fact that it's so smooth to drive, there's no gear changes, it's you know, effortless, great performance at low speeds, all those sort of things. And what we're finding is a lot of people who have leased their first electric car now onto their second, in fact, in some cases, third. Um, and you ask electric car owners what you're going to replace it with, most people are saying, oh, another electric car. They're not talking about going back to petrol or diesel. So people are buying them because they think there's some benefits, then they see there genuinely are real benefits there, and they think it's a big step forward. They don't want to go back to owning a petrol or diesel car again. So how do people uh, save money with an electric car? The, it comes down to leasing. 
So here's just a few examples that I went onto the internet yesterday to double check. Uh, Renault Zoe, four year lease, £199 a month with £199 deposit with battery rental and everything else. I did some shopping round, I got that price down to £139 a month. Nissan Leaf, two year lease with deposit, I managed to get that uh, look round, I got that price down to £179 with a £500 uh, deposit for £10,000 a year. So again, if you shop around and you start playing one, off and against, uh, one dealer off against another, you can get those prices right down. Now, that's for a car which has a list price of £25,000. Pretty good value for money. A few more. Persian, Peugeot Ion. Again, this was recently was uh, the price was uh, £139 a month with no, no deposit. Uh, Volkswagen E-Up is brand new and they aren't doing any discounts yet, but they will sooner or later. But it means that if you shop around, you can start, start getting some very good deals. So how do you make £200 free? Well, as I said earlier, if you've got, if, if, for something to be free, somebody's got to pay for it. So Google, you, you get for free. But you're paying for it because people advertise, uh, other people are paying for it through advertising on it. You've got YouTube videos. YouTube videos are free, but there's some advertising on there and you've got to watch the advertising. And that's how they do it. Uh, Spotify. You get a basic package for free so you can listen to all your music and everything else. But if you want the upgraded feature so you can listen to it on your mobile phone, for instance, you have to pay for that. And enough people pay for that upgrade to make, uh, make it free for everyone else. Libraries are free at point of use, but your homeowners pay for it through your council tax. So, yes, it's free, but actually we pay for it in a different way. NHS is another good example of that. Mobile phones. We give them, get, get the mobile phones for free, so long as we sign up for a contract for a year or two years to, as a, on, a, on a pay plan. So who pays for the car? You already pay for it uh, with your petrol. So if you're doing your, your higher mileage drivers, which we talked about earlier, you're probably spending as much per month on petrol as you would be by leasing an electric car. So, this is why, high, why higher mileage owners are buying electric cars or leasing electric cars, uh, and you know, because they're, they're saving money. There you go. You're doing 15,000 miles a year, you do 40 miles per gallon, you're spending between 170 and 200 pounds a month on fuel. That's your car. If you've got an older car, now this is where it gets really exciting because this can change the industry. You've got an older banger, you can't afford to get a new car because, you know, money's tight and everything else. Your car's 30 miles per gallon and it's smoky old Joe and you have to spend a fortune on it every MOT time. You're probably spending the same for 175 and 210 pound a month, a, a month on petrol. Well, this is a great opportunity to get these old vehicles off the road and give people a, a cleaner electric cars and of course they're getting brand new cars. Um, you know, for the, for, instead of a 15-year-old smoky old Joe. So it, can, it potentially can change the way that cars are, you know, how people use their cars. So there you go. If you're spending £200 a month on fuel, you can afford to replace it and get a car for the price of your fuel. In many cases, there's no capital cost or there's a small, and the deposits are quite often very low. You don't have to drive an old car anymore. So it's... The, the next step, basically, is how do you actually get a, 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 how do you get that message out to people, and that's actually down to marketing again. You know, we've done it, uh, bef uh, uh, done it before with mobile phones, uh, done it with all sorts of different technologies where where uh, where we do that. Here's just a case study for me. I earn twenty thousand miles a year, pay two hundred and twenty nine pound a month, seventeen pound a month extra on my electricity bill, get free charging on our mountain about, and I used to pay two hundred and fifty pound on petrol. So my car cost me four pounds less per month than my petrol bill, and that's a brand new car every two every two to three years. What about servicing? Uh, yeah, I still pay for servicing, but I'd have to pay for servicing anyway. Um, the servicing costs are lower because effectively they, they check they give it the whole thing a check over and they check the brakes. Basically, is what it comes down to. So every twenty thousand miles, twenty five thousand miles, yeah, new new tyres is, is is the biggest cost. But there's no tax, anything else. But all the other costs I have with a petrol car is gone. Insurance is slightly cheaper, so um, you know it, it's it's an, exci an exciting opportunity. So it's actually down to now getting the, uh, the the message out there that actually yes, you can save money with an electric car, because for an awful lot of people they can. And yes, there are some disadvantages. If you're genuinely doing long distances all the time, and you're going to have to recharge every single day on the motorway, well, that's going to get a drag because it is half an hour to do a full recharge. 
Um, but how many people actually do that? I mean, I, I do a fair number of uh, longer journeys, and maybe three times a month I have to stop and read, or three to four times a month I have to stop somewhere and recharge to do those longer distances, and that's not too much of a problem. And that's on 20,000 miles a year. So it's exciting. It, I, I suspect that the, the number of people in this room could probably, if you aren't using electric already, could probably save money with an electric car. And certainly we all know people who are doing those longer distances who would save money with an electric car. Um, and that's it. It's just, it, it's, it's just simple economics. What I think could happen is, as that message goes out, is we'll change the... Um, change the thought process from people thinking, well, why should I even consider an electric car? You want to change them to thinking, why should I consider anything else? And that's going to be key. We can use technology, in this case the technology of an electric car, to reduce the, uh, the pollution levels in this country quite considerably. As new cars come available and, they, and, and, and other ones, uh, uh, and, and uh, oil prices go up, then even more people are going to be starting to consider this as a, a very, very uh, serious, uh, you know, very good choice to, uh, to go for. And if they want a little bit more, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, I've lost, lost that, that slide. I had one more slide on there again, which was uh, um, it was oil prices over the last ten years, and also over the last uh, five days, uh, because they are so they fluctuate all over the place. In the last five days, oil prices have fluctuated by seven dollars per barrel, going up. And, and literally, you know, uh, uh, yes, at the moment, petrol and petrol pumps are cheap, but it will go up and down and up and down. How are you going to budget for the future? And uh, you know, this takes away all that, uh, all that risk. Mm -hmm.